We are going to demonstrate a custom setup for confocal microspectroscopy of Raman embryon scattering. The setup is built around a commercial inverted microscope to which we attach different interchangeable modules. Let us first describe the setup and the modules currently in place. Excitation light is provided by a diode pump, solid state laser of 561 nanometer wavelength. High wavelength stability is essential for brilliant spectroscopy. The laser light is coupled to a polarization maintaining single mode fiber, which delivers it to a custom confocal illuminator attached to the microscope back port. If we look inside, there is a polarizing beam splitter, which transmits the linearly polarized laser light. Next, a quarter wave plate converts linear polarization of the laser beam to circular polarization. The beam is then expanded by a telescope to fill the objective back aperture. In the place of a filter cube turret, we have a custom mirror slider with two positions. When the mirror is inserted in, the laser beam is reflected to the objective and light backscattered by the samples is reflected back to the microscope back port. When the slider is pulled out, the laser doesn't reach the objective and at the same time the path to the eyepiece is open. In this configuration, we can observe the sample in transmitted light using the eyepiece or capture transmitted light images with a camera. Let's go back to the path of the laser light backscattered by the sample. On its return to the confocal illuminator, it first encounters a dichroic beam splitter with cutoff around 570 nanometers. Here, Rama scattering with wavelength longer than the cutoff is reflected away and coupled to a single mode optical fiber. The fiber, which also acts as a confocal pinhole, then delivers the light to a custom Raman spectrometer. The rest of the beam, which contains elastic scattering and Brillouin scattering, goes back through the quarter wave plate, which changes circular polarization of the beam to linear polarization. Since direction of circular polarization is reversed upon reflection or backscattering, the linear polarization is now perpendicular to that of the incident laser beam. Therefore, it is reflected by the polarizing beam splitter and directed to a single mode optical fiber which delivers it to a pillar spectrometer. Again, the fiber also acts as a confocal pinhole. Let's now follow the light to the Raman spectrometer. The light from the fiber is collimated, passes through a 570 nanometer long pass filter and through a volume holographic grating, which spectrally disperses the light. The spectrum is then imaged on a chip of a cooled spectroscopic CCD camera. The initial alignment of the spectrometer involves optimizing the angle of the grating to maximize the light intensity in the first order of diffraction, and calibration using organic compounds with known Raman spectra to find the dependence of Raman shift on camera pixel number. Next, we'll look at Brillouin spectroscopy branch. In this case, the spectral shifts we are interested in are minute, a few percentage of a nanometer. Therefore, to reduce the intensity of elastic Rayleigh scattering peaks without losing Brillouin signal, we need an extremely narrow notch filter. It is this module, a common path interferometer. Inside, there is a block of gas positioned precisely in such a way that half of the beam propagates through the block and the other half of it outside the block. The part of the beam which travels through the block experiences a longer optical path and is therefore phase shifted compared to the other half. When they join back after the glass block, they interfere and the phase shift between them determines whether it is constructive or destructive interference. By adjusting the tilt of the block, we can finally tune the phase shift and achieve a situation where the laser light wavelength interferes destructively. This reduces the intensity of really scattered light by four orders of magnitude. The glass block position is adjusted by two actuators. One moves the glass block from left to right to place its edge in the center of the beam. The other actuator adjusts the tilt to finely tune the optical path difference. We typically use light back reflected inside the illuminator to optimize the actuator positions. We slide out the mirror, so no light goes to the objective, and the only light that reaches the spectrometer comes from back reflection inside the illuminator. The light that passes the interference filter is again coupled to an optical fiber and delivered to a brilliant spectrometer based on VIPA. 
virtually image phase array etalon. The light that reached the spectrometer is dispersed by the VPAR etalon, and the spectrum is imaged on a standard S CMOS camera. The camera image shows peaks belonging to several spectral orders with a Gaussian envelope superimposed. The spectrum we see consists of Rayleigh peaks only. It is the light back reflected inside the illuminator. If we look at the profile of the spectrum, we can clearly see the Gaussian envelope superimposed on the peaks. By adjusting the tilt of the VPAR etalon, we can move the Gaussian envelope and position its maximum to be centered between two Rayleigh peaks. The Rayleigh peaks are separated by the free spectral range of the etalon, which in our case is 30 GHz. Since we see peaks from several spectral orders, we know the frequency shift between them. We can use such an image to calibrate the spectrometer to find frequencies corresponding to different positions in the image. We can then minimize the Rayleigh peaks by adjusting the actuators of the common path interferometer. Next, we slide in the mirror and send the light to the objective. We don't have any sample there at the moment, only a drop of immersion oil on the objective. So what we see is the brillant spectra of the immersion oil. We can see Rayleigh peaks, the same pattern we saw when looking at back reflected light, and we notice brillant peaks between them. This peak is a Stokes peak, belonging to the same order of spectrum as this Rayleigh peak. And here is an anti-Stokes peak from the next order of the spectrum. Brillant shift can be calculated as the free spectral range minus the distance between two peaks divided by two. We control the experiment through Micromanager software. We use two instances of Micromanager. One controls the Raman spectrometer camera and the microscope scanning stage and focusing. The other instance controls the Brillouin spectrometer camera. To ensure simultaneous acquisition of both spectra, the Brillouin camera is triggered by the Raman camera. Let us now take a simultaneous Raman and Brillouin image. We will use a testing sample consisting of a plastic microchannel filled with water. We place the sample on the stage and use bright field image to focus. The laser beam position is marked by this crosshair in the bright field image. This helps us navigate to the structure of interest. We park the laser beam in the water inside the channel first and start fine focusing using live spectral acquisition. To start the acquisition, we set the Raman camera to spectral mode, which means full vertical binning of the chip. We set the trigger of the Brillouin camera to external and the exposures of both to 500 milliseconds. Then we start the live acquisition and we can see a live view of Raman and Brillouin spectra of water. If we move outside of the channel, we see the plastic spectra, Raman spectrum and Brillouin spectrum. Raman spectrum exhibits a strong peak from stretching CH2 vibrations. Brillouin shift is higher inside the plastic and lower in water. To acquire an image, we will move the stage in a grid pattern. We use a custom script in Micromanager to generate the grid coordinates. We define the number of points in the grid and their spacing. This will define our effective pixel size. It defines a grid around the current position. The Micromanager instance, which controls Raman camera, will control the stage and do the raster scanning. The other Micromanager instance, which controls Brillouin spectra, will collect a time series with each point being the Brillouin spectrum collected at one position of the stage. Once the acquisition has finished, we have spectra for each pixel in the grid and will run a script to construct images from them, a Raman and Brillouin map. The Raman image has two channels, each corresponding to the integrated spectrum in different spectral band. In this case, one channel corresponds to CH2 stretching vibration. It shows high intensity in the plastic and low in water. And the other channel corresponds to the water peak, so the intensity is high inside the channel. The Brillouin image is a map of average Brillouin shift. Again, we see the shift is higher inside the plastic and lower in water.